My name is Enrico and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the lawsuit filed by Yuga Labs, Inc. versus Ryder Rips and some others, including some John Doe defendants. So uh, I will put the complaint that was filed in the description below. And by the way, I've already done videos concerning this topic. So go ahead and take a look in the description. You'll see the link to the other videos. I have a playlist about Board Ape Yacht Club, which you can follow along. Uh, go ahead and hit the bell, subscribe, because I'm going to be doing lots of videos in the future about this lawsuit and the implications uh, you know, with regards to intellectual property rights, copyright, trademarks, uh, and licensing and ownership are all going to be a big part of this lawsuit filed by Yuga Labs and therefore we're going to be talking about these things moving forward. So go ahead and subscribe. Today I want to talk about what exactly is the lawsuit that was filed by Yuga Labs against Ryder Rips. There's a ton of confusion out there. A ton, right? Um, if you look at the, the commentary of Twitter and Discord and on LinkedIn, you're going to see a lot of people who really don't understand what is happening with that lawsuit. Number one, the lawsuit does not involve claims of copyright infringement by Yuga Labs against Ryder Rips. Everyone kind of assumes that because uh, Ryder Rips uploaded part of the Board Ape collection to a new NFT project and minted those same Board Apes that Yuga Labs offered up as part of his project that this must be a case about copyright infringement. It's not. And there are lots of reasons for that. We're going to talk about that in future videos. It's unclear whether or not Yuga Labs even retained any copyright to the Board Ape images. In fact, and this may shock you, it's unclear whether or not generative art is worthy of copyright protection. And if so, to what extent? So this isn't a copyright infringement case that was filed by Yuga Labs. That's number one. Number two, the case is not about defamation. Um, you know, Ryder Rips has uh, made some allegations uh, some factual allegations about the founders of the Board Ape Yacht Club project and their ties, their alleged ties to 4chan, their alleged ties to the alt-right white supremacist community. This lawsuit does not deal with the truth or veracity of those statements. Whether or not those allegations are true will not be resolved in this particular lawsuit. This lawsuit is about trademark infringement from the, from the use of Board Ape and BAYC, Board Ape Yacht Club, all of which are trademarks that Yuga Labs are trying to get filed with the USPTO, trying to get registered that may or may not be valid trademarks for a variety of reasons, which again we'll be talking about in the future, future videos, subscribe. Uh, but this case is about trademark infringement because of his use of R-R-B-A-Y-C, right? Which is similar on its face to B-A-Y-C, assuming that is trademark worthy. The allegation is that use is forbidden because it's going to cause confusion in the marketplace as to the source and origin of goods. So let's kind of break this down a little bit so everyone understands what's going on. Trademarks protect against likelihood of confusion. So they're not literal, they're anything that's confusingly similar that is likely to confuse a consumer as to the source and origin of goods. So on its highest level, does Ryder Rips project, is that project likely to confuse people as to the source and origin of his project and the apes that are offered, the tokens that are minted onto the blockchain with regard to that project. So if someone goes to Ryder Rips project, will they likely think that they're actually dealing with Yuga Labs? And that's going to be an essential threshold issue in this case. Now there's a lot of facts that are going to be discussed around this likelihood of confusion issue. Trademark disputes are fact intensive meaning there's rarely a clear answer and the end result is unknown until the end. In this case, this is not a clear-cut case of trademark infringement 
A lot of people think it is, but it is absolutely not. Ryder Rips has defenses. From the moment he launched his own project, he had people agree, he provided context, and he made people agree that they had seen this context. So when someone went to buy a RRBAYC board ape token, they should have and likely did see a disclaimer which told them what Ryder Rips was doing. He was made, he was engaged in commentary about the BAYC project and Yuga Labs and its founders. He was using this mint, this launch, to bring attention to the issues of white supremacy that uh, are surrounding that project right now. He also, from what I can tell from the things that he said on, on, on his web pages, is also trying to bring attention to what is an NFT and are the images that are linked from the NFTs IP protectable? Uh, is there a copyright involved in these NFTs? These are all legitimate issues which attorneys are, have been debate, debating very strenuously for the past couple of years, right? And certainly a lot over the last six months. So these are legitimate issues. So how is this all gonna play out in a courtroom? Yuga Lab says trademark infringement. He used confusingly similar marks, B-A-Y-C, Board Ape, uh, to our marks, the logo. He used, uh, a, a, you know, in the, that people are likely to be confused by that. Ryder Rips is gonna say, this is a parody project fully protected by the First Amendment to the United States Constitution and there is a long history of projects just like this one where courts have found that in fact the First Amendment protects against this, against any sort of infringement claim that this is protected free speech under the First Amendment. So people want to say it's a trademark infringement case. I guess the way I see it is this is a First Amendment case. This is a First Amendment parody case. And it doesn't matter if you take a look at the trademark infringement claims filed by Yuga Labs or the dilution claims uh, filed by Yuga Labs or the domain name cyber squatting claims uh, filed by Yuga Labs. With regards to all of those claims, parody, First Amendment, free speech, commentary are defenses to an allegation of trademark infringement. So we are Talk, we can talk a lot about a lot of things with regards to you know, the legal issues, the merits of the allegations concerning white supremacy and a lot of other things that are going on here. A lot of IP issues that have been raised by the lawsuit that are now coming to the forefront. But if you want to talk about the lawsuit that's been filed by Yuga Labs, you need to focus in on very narrow issues. Trademark infringement allegation, First Amendment parody defense. Now, some people are saying, well, he profited off of his First Amendment parody project, his commentary about Yuga Labs and the Board of Yacht Club. Well, that's not necessarily fatal to a First Amendment defense, but we don't even know that that's true. Just because there was revenue generated by Ryder Rip's project doesn't mean that he is or will profit from that or that he intended to profit from that launch. And that money could be going to, I've heard potentially to charity, it could even be going to defend his First Amendment rights, all of which would be, would, would undermine the arguments that he's profiting, right? If, if he's gonna have to go up against Yuga Labs, he's gonna need hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more. If that money from the mint goes to legal fees, he's got a very effective argument that he had no intent to profit and in fact did not profit from the project. I've seen a lot of commentary about whether or not he's getting residual royalties from future aftermarket sales of those, of those NFTs. Um, I haven't seen any proof that that's true, that there's any residual uh, royalties. I haven't tried to dig into the smart contract, I'm sure, people have, it's easy. That's the beauty of blockchain. It's all there to be seen, right? Let's wait for the facts to come out. Let's see how this case plays out before we jump to conclusions. And you're more than welcome to take a side. 
Uh, I'm not taking any sides in the dispute. I just want to make sure everyone understands what's really going on from a legal lawyer point of view. All right, I'm Enrico. Stay tuned. Subscribe. We're going to be talking about this a lot over the next couple of months. This is super healthy for the blockchain community, super healthy for the NFT community because we need to talk about IP rights. We need to talk about copyright. We need to talk about trademark. We need to talk about minting and secondary sales and the distinction between those things. We need to talk about the terms of use or the copyright license or assignment that accompanies any NFT launch. We need to talk about these things, right? The concept that it, the, 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 these are all intangible, these are all intangible rights seems to have been lost along the way uh, as NFTs exploded. We need to circle back on that issue and really start to dig in on the fact that these are intellectual property projects that need to be, the intellectual property needs to be created and it needs to be protected, it needs to be licensed, there need to be restrictions. We need to think about how those intellectual property rights are transferred, if at all, because that's the essence of these NFT projects. So for the community, this is a good thing. Until next time, I'm Enrico. Go ahead and comment below, ask any questions below. I'll answer everything. Thanks.